Hi, my name is Michael with Icon Assist. Today I'll be walking you through our Shutterstream and Shutterstream 360 product photography software feature, dual shot background removal. Uh, this is one of our latest features released in version 10.0 of our software. And essentially what it does is it takes a couple different pictures at different exposures and we'll figure out where the product is versus where the background is, kind of using a silhouette mask, and we'll automatically remove the background from the product. Um, our setup today will be with a compatible camera connected via USB to our computer. It's just an entry level Canon DSLR camera. Working with our medium LumiPad 360 lighting kit, consists of two front tower lights as well as a backlight panel. They're all dimmable and color adjustable too. As well as our silver mid turntable and medium uh, standard 360 riser. Our subject will be Buzz Lightyear. Um, typically white products on white backgrounds are a bit more difficult, so we'll try to put this tool to its test and see just how well it works. Um, so my first step here will be place my object in the center of the turntable. And now what we'll do is turn your attention over to the software. And actually what I can see here is I probably just need to raise my camera just a tad. And now we'll go over to the software and we'll walk you through the workflow. All right, so what we're seeing here is a real-time preview. You can see my hand going back and forth in front of the subject. And the nice thing about this real-time preview is we've built an exposure simulation for a lot of the compatible cameras that we work with. And what we're seeing here, it looks a little overexposed. So we can start making changes to our camera settings. Uh, for instance, I'm gonna change the shutter speed from 1 13th to 1 20th of a second. And as you see, when I make that change and or a more drastic change, we see the result in real time on the monitor. So we're gonna first find our optimal setting here. And something like 1 15th, that looks pretty good. And all right, so we're just gonna remember that number here. And pardon me, what I can actually do is just say, Let's call this correct exposure, okay? And that will save that camera setting profile. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is find a kind of a darker profile, an underexposed profile. Um, so we're just gonna take our camera settings down. Maybe we'll take it down, that was about uh, one, two, three, four stops. We're gonna take it down to 1 40th of a second and we're gonna save this as if the last one was correct exposure, we're gonna call this under exposed. All right, so we have our two camera settings here, the correct exposure and under exposed. Now, what we are gonna do is, we have a snap option here. Um, pardon me, before I do that, we wanna go up into this blue gear wheel in the top right hand corner. And what we wanna do is snap options and dual shot. Uh, we want to set a dual shot camera profile. So shot one will be, let's just use the underexposed for shot one. Shot two will be the correct exposure. Now what we want to do is right click on our snap and we want to do image capture with dual shot. You can see there's multiple different options here. We want to make sure that image capture with dual shot is selected. And the last step, uh, let's just go ahead and crop this subject. We have crop enabled. And what I'm going to do is click and drag over my subject and we're gonna say, let's only shoot a picture of what's inside this area. So I will hit snap here. And what that's gonna automatically do is take two different pictures for me. If you recall, the first one was the underexposed image. The second is the actual correct exposure. So as you can see here, nothing changed other than our camera settings. It's the exact same crop, exact same focal point. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is enter into our editing tool and we want to go up into the BR button here. And what we want to select is dual shot background removal. And you just want to make sure it says that in blue writing right there. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to use the odd images as the mask, meaning that this first image um, is going to be used as the mask. The second image will be the actual result that we get, that we kind of take away from... Uh, from here so there's a few different preview options the first one that we're seeing here and pardon me before I dive into that um, I should mention that we do have 
dark, mid, and bright sliders. And this is just basic stuff from kind of a histogram. Um, all the darks are all the dark pixels. The mids are, you know, the middle pixels, and middle colors. And the brights are the bright pixels or the bright colors such as white. So you can see as I start to make changes to these sliders, um, you're going to see stuff happens to the actual image here. Um, you know, stuff gets transparent. Um, we do have different uh, different previews that we can show here. Um, we can say blink the transparent area and it's going to start blinking. And or we can just show the mask, which will just show a black mask. Um, and as we can see, we're not doing that good of a job of cutout here. So um, typically what we suggest is to keep your slide bars usually within usually about one or two values of, of each other one or two numbers of each other and then what you want to do is probably lock your sliders and this can change this is kind of a general suggestion if you're working with opaque items such as maybe a water bottle or a glass bottle or something along those lines um, you might want a bit more distance between them but um, we'll go ahead and use uh, just one value between the three of them and I'm gonna lock my sliders so now that when I drag we're gonna see here that it locks them all. So when I drag one, it drags them all. And what I'm gonna do instead of using this mask that it's showing, I'm going to say, show me the actual product here. And maybe what I'll do is just say blink the transparent area. So we can see now we're getting a pretty good cutout of this object. One thing that it can have a hard time with is shadows. And maybe if I drag these down a bit, you're gonna to start to see we actually got rid of the, sh oh, there you go. You can see if you go too high, you're gonna get rid of the shadows. So we're gonna take that down just where it looks pretty good. And looking around our subject and inspecting here, it looks like we're doing a pretty good job here. Um, a couple more uh, kind of options here is once a mask grow radius, um, that's actually going to increase. This is a pixel value, this thing that you see here, 16. And that's saying increase it by 16 or X number of pixels. Typically what we'll do, there's sometimes an outer glow, depending what background you're shooting with. Typically what we'll do is we'll just say, you know, usually about two or three pixels is good. Um, images being shot with really any new age camera. Uh, there's plenty of megapixels to work with. So just eating in one to three pixels is typically a good, uh, a good idea. And then what we want to do is we can just hit apply. The other thing that we can do before I hit that will be delete the mask after processing. I'm just gonna hit apply and it's gonna automatically remove that mask image for us. And it will show, oh, pardon me. Um, this is the last option here, constrained to a clicked region or unconstrained selection. Uh, you have an option of one or the other. Um, if you check constrain to a clicked region, it will not kind of go past a hard edge, meaning that for instance, let me just move this here just to kind of show you. You can see here where it's eating out kind of part of his eye. Um, if I'd selected constrain select to clicked region, it would not actually cut that part out. The, the preview just doesn't show that. So we're going to revert back to our previous settings. I'm just gonna select a pixel on the background here and hit apply. And that will cut our image out from the whitish background that we previously had onto a transparent background. Now what we can do inside of Shutterstream with this is we can output in multiple different file formats, uh, JPEG, TIFF, PNG, RAW. Uh, TIFF and PNG will retain the transparent background, whereas if you output as a JPEG, what you can actually do is choose the alpha blending option. So you could say automatically put it on whatever background color that you wanted to select. So. Uh, that's how that feature works. Now let's take this one step further here. I'm going to hit live view and I'm going to go back into my options area and I'm going to select BR options and we can actually auto apply this. So whatever settings that we just previously made, maybe we want, you know, we have a lot of throughput here and we just want to shoot, um, place an object, shoot, automatically have that subject removed onto a transparent background, we can say automatically apply that after capture. So when I hit OK there, and let me just give this a different angle. All right, looks good there. I'm just gonna hit snap. And what that's gonna do is take our two images and automatically cut out onto the transparent background. 
So now taking this one step further, we're going to employ this automation into our 360 product photography workflow. So I'm gonna select obviously Iconis' turntable. We're working with our silver mid 360 photography turntable. Uh, choose the number of frames that you wanna shoot, little as two all the way up to over 8,000. We're just gonna say 72 for the purpose of this demo here. And we wanna shoot in, let's say counterclockwise. Okay, so everything looks good here. I'm not going to dive into the 360 workflow that I would typically do, but um, we're going to go ahead and in the bottom left-hand corner of the 360 shooting window, what we can do is enable our shooting mode. That will be dual shot, and then when I hit start, that will automate our process in a turn stop snap workflow. And obviously the different thing about the snap is instead of just taking one picture, it's taking two images um, at each angle and automatically cutting those out for us. So again, the company name is Iconesis. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you.